Hey up everyone, welcome back to the Rugby League History Channel. Today on the channel, I'll be doing my tips and predictions for round 24 of the 2024 NRL season. Last week, I got six out of eight correct. So for the last couple of weeks now, six out of eight, six out of eight, I'm getting six out of eight pretty much every week. Am I complaining? No, of course not, because that's pretty good. But uh, let's see how we do in round 24. Of course, there's some big games coming up. Game of the round to start off with, and then we've got some games that are going to determine whether teams are going to be playing play finals or not. So let's crack on to the first game, which is starting on Thursday night. And that first match is game of the round, and this one will probably decide potentially who finishes minor premiers this year. It's Penrith against Melbourne. This one's being played on Thursday night at Penrith Stadium. Penrith in second place at the moment, Melbourne in first. Last 10 meetings between these two sides, Penrith have won six of those. These two sides met in round one, where Melbourne defeated Penrith eight points to nil down there at Amy Park in Melbourne. Penrith come into this game having won five matches in a row, and of course they had that comeback against Parramatta last week, but let's not talk about that one. And uh, as for Melbourne, they record it. Penrith Stadium isn't that great. The last time they actually won a match there was in round 13 of the 2015 NRL season and they won 20 points to nil there and that was when the stadium were called Pepper Stadium. Now, I did a video about worst stadium names ever and this one certainly was on there. Um, Melbourne had a, a routine win over South last week at Stadium Australia. This is a really... Um, tight game to call obviously this could really decide the minor premiership but I'm going to go for Penrith to win by 1 to 6 points not even 1 to 12 I think this will be 1 to 6 um, Penrith are a team just ever since 2020 it's like they've got this ethos about them now they're never beaten they're never down it doesn't matter how many points you're in front they're going to come back and win and I know Melbourne's got that kind of vibe about them as well but uh, just after last week with what Penrith did, um, they're going to be hard to beat. So I'm going to go for Penrith to win by one to six points. The first match on the Friday is between Manly and New Zealand. This one's being played at Brookvale Oval. Manly were in in sixth at the moment and New Zealand in 14th. Last 10 meetings between these two sides, uh, Manly and New Zealand have won five each. And also there's a draw thrown in there which happened this year, round six, over there in New Zealand. Now, New Zealand's record at Brookfield Oval is, you can see, pretty decent. 16 matches that they've played there, 7 wins, 8 losses and 1 draw. Um, New Zealand's season's pretty much over, I think. I think they can't make finals now. As for Manly Moringa, I think they know it's simple for them. They just have to keep winning and they'll play finals this year. But based off what I've seen so far this season, I'm going to go for Manly to win. I'm going to go for Manly to win by 1 to 12 points there on the Friday. And the match on the Friday is Sydney Roosters against Parramatta. This one's being played at the new Sydney Football Stadium. Sydney Roosters in third at the moment. Parramatta in 16th. Now, in recent times, East have dominated this fixture between the two clubs. They've won eight of the last 10 meetings. And they've averaged, you could say, 20 points or more in a few of them games. Now, last week, East had the bye. But for Parramatta, well, I live in England, as you know. I'd stream the game from, um, I was at work, I, I just had it streamed, so I was listening it on YouTube. And when the score was 34 points to 20 in favour of Parramatta now, look, I've supported this club my entire life. I know what they're about, and I just had a feeling, is this too good to be true? And that was the case, and I, I was fucking fuming. I did an Instagram video on it, go check it out. But let's just say, if I was just going to sum it up in an emotion, I'd be like this. That's how I was at full time. But <laughs> getting back to the game. Now, look, in the last couple of weeks, Parramatta have improved. They've, um, for me, everything seems to be a bit better. But in a couple of the games, they're just not getting the result. For this one, though, I think playing against it. East team coming off the bye, the fact that they don't have a good record against East in recent times, and the fact that it's being played at the, at the new SFS, where even Paramount they never had a good record at the old SFS. So I'm going to go for East to win by 1 to 12 points. Could be 13 plus, but I don't really 
pulled out much hope for Parramatta in this game. This match on the Super Saturday is Canterbury Bankstown against Redcliffe. This one's being played at Salter Oval in Bundaberg, home of Bundaberg Rum and Drop Bears. Now, Canterbury are in fifth at the moment, Redcliffe are in eighth. Um, these two sides met last year for the one and only time at the same venue, round 22. Canterbury Bankstown won that 23 points to 22. Canterbury coming to this game having won three matches in a row and I think they're pretty much assured to play in finals this year. As for Redcliffe, once again, they, they let a game almost get away from them, but they managed to get the, the result against New Zealand. This is a really important game for both sides, more so for Redcliffe. They, you know, they want to play finals this year after having a pretty good season. But from what I've seen so far between the two sides, I'd have to go for Canterbury to win. So I'm going to go for Canterbury to win by 1 to 12 points on Saturday. And the second match on Super Saturday is between North Queensland and Canberra. This one's being played at the Queensland Country Bank Stadium in Townsville. North Queensland 7th, Canberra in eighth, uh, 11th I should say. Battle of the Garrison Cities between these two sides. Now North Queensland in recent times have a great record against Canberra. They've won their last six matches against them. The last time that Canberra defeated North Queensland anywhere in the league... We were in round 12 of the 2020 NRL season and that were at the Queensland Country Bank Stadium in Townsville. Canberra's lost two matches in a row coming into this and North Queensland, well, I don't know what happened. They started great in the Queensland derby and then it just, I don't know, fell apart like a Chinese motorcycle, as I said last week about the team. So for this one, as I said, like the, the previous game, the Seasons are on the line here. Both teams have to win to ensure that they're going to play finals. Um, North Queensland were really hoping maybe to get a top four position. That's probably out of the case now. From what I've seen between these two sides in recent times, I'm still leaning more towards North Queensland. So I will go for North Queensland to win by 1 to 12 points at home on the Saturday. And the third match on the Super Saturday is West Tigers against South. This one's being played at Campbelltown's Stadium. It sees West Tigers, their bottom of the league, still 17th, South Sydney. Not that much better in 15th place. Now, in the last couple of meetings that these two sides have had between each other, uh, South Sydney have won four matches on the bounce against West Tigers in the league. Um, and this is a bit of an interesting start I found. South Sydney's last ever game that they played before this one at Campbelltown Stadium were on the 12th of June, 1999 when South Sydney played against Western Suburbs and they defeated them 16 points to 10. And overall, South Sydney have played 12 matches at the venue. They've had four wins, six losses and two draws. With this game, um, look, with West Tigers, their, their defence is fucking shocking. It's really, really bad. As I mentioned in my last video, they conceded, I think, in the last five games of over 200 points and, and they conceded another 30 against Newcastle. For, for me, the effort with West Tigers is there. It's just the quality isn't there. They can't defend and uh, they're leaking points like a sieve. As for South Sydney, um, they can score points. I mean, it's, it's been a really bad season for South. Let's just be fair, like, but for this one, um, I'm going to go for South to win. I'm going to go for South to win 13+. plus. I just think with West Tigers, as I said, they can score points, but they can't defend and what's... And as we know, defence wins games, defence wins premierships, and West Tigers just can't do that. So until I see any change, I'm going to have to go for South Sydney to win. So South Sydney, 13 plus. The first match on the Sunday is between St George and the Gold Coast. This one's being played at Wynn Stadium in Wollongong. St George in 9th, Gold Coast in 13th. Now, interesting stat for this match is the Gold Coast have never won at Wynn Stadium. <laughs> that's a bit of a pun or however you want to put it. They've never won at Wynn Stadium, but that's the case. They've never won there. They've got a draw there once that's as good as it's got. Last week, um, I think St George were never really in that game against Canterbury at Cogger Oval. I think they were always second best. As for the Gold Coast, well, I am shocked and I'm not shocked that they lost the way they did because... Ever since the original Gold Coast coming in 1988 and the, all the incarnations that have followed, it's always been a case with the Gold Coast that it's two steps forward, three steps back. Whenever something promising seems to look like it's, it's going to happen for, the, for them, no, 
not going to happen. Back to Shire again. So this is another game where it's all to play for. Go Coast season's on the line. St George just outside the top eight. They'll be desperate to win. Um, they'll be bitterly disappointed after losing against Canterbury last week at Cogre. Uh, for this one, this is really a flip of coin because we, who's going to show up? Like, we, could the Gold Coast show up like they have done a couple of times this year and just blow a team away? Or is it going to be another sort of uh, strong performance by St George? I will go for St George to win by 1 to 12 points, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Gold Coast win this. And as, we, as we've seen in the past, teams that get battered one week, they come out the next week and they're way better. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens, but I'm going to go for St George to win. And the final game to close out the round is also on the Sunday. It's Cronulla Sutherland against Newcastle. This one's being played at Shark Park. Cronulla in fourth and Newcastle in tenth. Newcastle have won six of the last ten meetings against Cronulla in the league. Their record at Shark Park since 1988. They've played 29 matches there. 11 wins, 17 losses and a draw. Uh, last week, Cronulla, a fantastic performance against the Gold Coast. They tortured them. Uh, they bossed them all over the pitch. 44 and out, very impressive. And Newcastle had a, I guess, like a routine win over West Tigers. Um, I listened to the game on the radio and, uh, you know, they, they played well in patches. They didn't let in some soft tries and give away some penalties. But besides that, I thought you know, they were all right. And they come into this game, their season's on the line as well. They, they've got to win if they want to play finals. They're just outside. Cronulla are looking to cement a top four spot. Um, for this one, I'm going to go for Cronulla to win at home. I'm going to go for them to win by 1 to 12 points. I just think that uh, overall, throughout the entire season, Cronulla have been a better team than Newcastle. So I'll go for Cronulla to win 1 to 12. So those are my tips around 24, the 2024 NRL season. A bit of a mouthful there. But I um, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. And thanks to everyone that watched my video last week, making it one of the most watched tipping videos on YouTube. I, I was kind of taking a bit of a gamble. I thought I'd get back in front of the camera again. I know, I like, I'm no oil painting, but I thought I'd just give it a go. And um, obviously there was a good response by people. So I thought I'd do it again this week. But anyway, thanks to everyone that's tuned in, liked the videos and subscribed recently. And this has been Rugby League History and I'll catch us all later in the next one. Alright, ta-ra for now.